and blue and dandy, and dandy, and dandy. Hello everybody and welcome to Cooking with Goldbridge. We're back with another one of those block rocking beats. Doesn't work with cooking, but fish and chips. We're doing fish and chips today and I'm very excited about this. A good old British classic. For me, fish and chips, it's the Alan Shearer of the culinary world. A an absolute English classic, in fact. British, yes, but English, yes. I could have gone with Stephen Gerrard, but I'm looking for somebody with a bit of class, a bit of endurability, a, a, a little bit boring, but, but a classic. Alan Shearer, fish and chips. So what have we got? We've got our potatoes. There's not a lot, there's not a lot of um, ingredients for it today, but we've got beer for the batter. We've got flour, we've got salt, and uh, we've got uh, baking powder, and we've got fish, and we've got potatoes. And then, in the background, we've got a deep fat fryer. He or she, I want, I want to be equal here, it could be a she. I don't want to call it a she because there are uh, historical connotations about women in the kitchen. So I'll call it a he, or a he, her. It doesn't matter. It's a deep fat fryer. It's, it's non-gender specific. It's a bloody deep fat fryer at the end of the day. What are we getting stuck into about gender for? So um, yes, that is going to play a very, very important part, deep fat fryer. Now, look, what I would say is, don't do this unless you're sensible and over 18 or you've got an adult with you because that's going to have hot oil in it. And look, we've all seen the comedy sketches. I had to edit a bit out there because I got lost with myself talking about things I shouldn't be talking about with deep fat fryers. Anyway, anyway. Be careful with it, because you can put fish in there, you can put chips in there. People in Scotland put Mars bars in there. I know, they're, they're crazy, they're absolutely crazy. But um, we're going to be putting some fish and chips in there. Now your chips are really important, we're going to go to that in a minute, and I'm going to do the batter. Basically, it's not going to be like the lasagna, this isn't, because it's, it, it's very, very, very simple. But, you've got, but if you get it right, you've got banging fish and chips that I think are better than the chip shop. And we're going to do a piece, some peas as well, but um, they're optional. Fish and chips. Fish, cod fillets from the supermarket or the fishmongers. What a, posh people will know what I mean. Um, beer for your batter, salt, flour, baking powder and a bowl. Potatoes. Very important. I'm going to show you how to cut them. Look at those lovely potatoes. Look, that, that looks like a parsnip. You'll see in a minute. That's a good one. Yeah, I'm not happy about that. This is the sort of potato size you want. One centimetre. One centimetre. One centimetre. That, that, potato, that potato we had there was the Phil Jones of potatoes. Awkward, hard to do. This is the, the Wayne Rooney, who actually used to get called Potato Head, which was a bit unfair. I'm, I'm saying it's Wayne Rooney because he's a very, very good footballer and that's a very good potato. So we've cut them in centimetre strips there. These are going to be great chips. See, that's a chip. That's perfect size. Again, good chip, good chip, good chip. These are perfect. Centimetre, good chip. Centimetre, good chip. You see these in a fish and chip shop. They're good chips. They are like parsnips. These are like real chips that you get in a chip shop. But you can't do anything about it because it's about the, it's about the size of the potato. But, uh, so, you know, you know, good chips, bad chips. This is going to be a challenge, this small one, but it's still, you can still do it. I don't know how. You just end up with smaller chips. Again, you can go in the good chip pile. Who would have thought good and bad chip pile would be so interesting? Still get away with it. I still, yeah, you're, you're going in the crap chip pile. Basically, the wife's having them and I'm having these. Don't tell her. Don't tell her, because we'll have eaten this before this goes out. Bap, 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 bap. She leads a lonely life. Do, do, do. Classic Ace of Spades, I think. Swedish group. Poundland rock set. Rest in peace. Anyway, we're going to make the batter. The batter for the fish, not the chips. Don't batter your chips. That would be ridiculous. So we're going to batter the chips. Um, and what you need for this is 150 millilitres of beer or ale or lager, whatever you like. Salt. Don't use it all. Arsenal fans, I call it. Uh, baking powder and uh, 115 uh, grams of flour and a bowl. And what you need to do is get a sieve. More sieve's got more. It's got more leaks than Arsenal's defence. They're getting it big time, aren't they today? They're getting it big time. So when you sieve the flour through, you can do a few things really. But basically, try not to make a mess. 
This sieve's crap. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, look, it's broken. It's bloody broke. How, how are you supposed to sieve with a with something that's bloody broke? I can't work with this. Force it through. The sieve's broke. It's broke. If, if I start shaking it, it's going to go all everywhere, and then I'm going to have to tidy up. And I don't want to do that. I'll sod it. We've we've sieved half of it. It'll work out fine. It'll work out fine. Trust me. That's going in the sink for her to wash later. That's not sexist. She just likes washing up pots. I don't. Um, a, a teaspoon of teaspoon of so salt. Come on. You know when you're tipping it and it won't come out. A teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of baking powder, which will just give it something I don't even know. Oh, for God's sake. The bloody lid's come off now. A teaspoon. I think you meant to sieve that as well. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Oh, God. It's going up on the bloody side now. Anyway, you meant to make a well. Make a well in the middle with all the, for the flour. What that means is a hole in the middle of the flour. You can probably not see it, but a hole in the middle of the flour. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna tip your beer in, give it a bit of a stir, half your beer in, start to give it a whisk. Whisk is a good thing. You could use an electronic whisk if you like. And what will straight away happen is it will just all stick on your whisk like that, which is not what we want. So put a bit more beer in to liquefy it and uh, what you want to do, oh, yeah, give it a good old stir. You want to get it going into like a double cream substance. Because ultimately what you're going to do is you're going to dip your fish in here and stick it into the boiling hot oil. Yes, that got you thinking, didn't it, you little pervert. So I'm saying dip, dip your fish in. You're thinking dipping something else in. Well, if you're doing that, you're filthy and you can do the next bit. Well, no, don't ever put any body part into a chip pan. It would be horrific. And I'm not even joking. I saw it, I saw it on a comedy series once, they did it. We'll be in serious trouble. Now this is good. If you add the water if you add the beer in gradually and stir it up, it will gradually become a more pasty, less pasty substance and more of a creamy substance, which we're going to bathe our fish in before we put it into the batter, into the into the uh, chip pan. I call it a chip pan. What I mean is a deep fat fryer because it's not exclusive to chips. It really isn't. Final bit in, all that's gone. Some more for me. I love cooking when you're putting beer in, ale in, or red wine in, because you can have a little drink with it yourself. And as you can see now with that, I better not drop this, she only bought it the other day. As you can see with that now, it's a lovely, uh, creamy texture that you can just dip your fish in. And then we can put it into the deep fat fryer. Right, we're on to the chip section. Batter's in the background, there's our beautiful chips, all chopped up like I told you to do. So they're nice, they've been washed in water. They've, you can leave them, you can leave them to dry with a bit of uh, paper towel over the top of them. Now what's happening now is the deep fat fryer, the non-gender specific deep fat fryer is now heating up. And the great thing about a deep fat fryer is you can do it with oil in a, in a, in a, in a, like on, on the hob in a big thing that's silver. But deep fat fryer is better because you can just set the temperature that you want. And what you need to do is set it on a temperature of about 130. So mine's warming up at the moment, the oil's in. 130 degrees when that's ready I will put the chips in but I'm holding the potatoes for a reason this is something I learned this year and I suppose at the end of the day what I've learned about potatoes is a little bit like what you learn about quality whether it's designer clothes or you know women or men let's not be gender specific or friends or cars there is ranking now for all my life I just thought potatoes are potatoes this year by accident, we got a substitution from Tesco supermarket. We ordered some potatoes and they sent us as a substitute, Tesco's finest. Lo and behold, we're having a Sunday lunch dinner and I said to the wife, these potatoes are magnificent. She went, wow, you never use the word magnificent. And I said, they're magnificent. And we looked into it and actually there is a difference between the quality of potato. Not every potato 
brand is the same. You can get your value potato or you can get top of the range. So the better the potato you buy, the better the quality of the chip, roaster, um, not rooster, roaster, it's like a roast potato, mashed potato, whatever. Whatever you wanna do with your potato, it'll be a better quality. Anyway, um, this is gonna be good. We pop it open, we lift this up, and I'm gonna put some of these chips, they're not going in yet, you can sort of probably hear it. I am gonna show you all in a minute, but I'm just gonna put hands washed as well, very important at the moment. And I'm gonna do these in two sections because these are gonna be twice cooked chips. That's how we're gonna make it work. Twice cooked chips make for the best chips. So half of my chips have gone in, 130 degrees the heat of that oil, in they go. Where's my spoon? Just make sure it's covered with the oil. And they're gonna go in for between five, seven minutes. Basically, I just want them part cooked. So if I show you what's going on here, not in my kitchen, but in with the oil, it goes, I don't know why I'm showing you inside the deep fat fryer, close it off and uh, we'll be back in a few minutes time. But yeah, five minutes, just let them keep their color, but cook slightly. So about five minutes at 130 degrees. And then what we'll do is we'll take them out, we'll lay them onto that kitchen towel and then we'll cook the rest and then we will leave them. No, we're doing fish and chips properly. We're not doing bloody oven chips and fish fingers. Of course my viewers will take notice. They're not bloody Burnley fans. Anyway, here we go. There's my part, co part cooked chips. Ooh, that, you could get that wrong. Part cooked chips. So yeah, you probably wouldn't eat those at the moment. Um, and some fish and chip shops would serve them up like that, but we're not, we're not going for that white look. They're part cooked chips. We're gonna cook them twice. So I've got a few more in there at the moment that you can see are going, but this is the first lot. And what happens is basically you cook them, like I said, for 130 degrees in the, in the deep fat fryer for about five minutes and you get this sort of texture, which is quite soggy, but soft. And they're sort of half cooked because you're going to twice cook them. Because what we're going to do is we're going to leave them now that that's on a plate on um, kitchen roll, I think it's called. So they're just draining and, you know, breathing and whatever like that. When the next set are done, we'll put them on top. But you can leave that for a while. You can leave it for a while because they're half cooked. Whenever you want to go back and cook them for your dinner, they're fine. Some people even freeze them at this point. But me, I'm going to leave them about 10 minutes, then I will cook them. Because what's going to happen is we're going to knock the heat up. Oh, yes. It's getting hot in here. Let's take off. All, no, let's not take off all the clothes. But it's going to get hot in here in the deep fat fryer because it's going to go up from 130 degrees all the way up to 180 because that is we've got, we're gonna use the battered fish for, but what we'll do is, when these chips are half cooked, put them on the plate, we'll whack it up to 180 degrees. When that's ready, we can whack the chips in, which I'll show you. They'll go in for the second part of their cooking. It's like having two hot baths, they're loving it. Never been so clean. Um, and they will go in for literally two or three minutes just to finish them off. And then when they're out, we'll do the fish. Yeah, the fish. That's why I'm wearing blue for the sea. Right, it's the Roy Keane moment of the fish and chips. I don't, they, they do like it. They do like fish and chips in Ireland. In fact, funny story about fish and chips in Ireland for you. They do have fish and chips, but you don't get mushy peas. You don't get curry sauce. You don't get pucker pies. And I don't think you get kebabs. Well, you didn't when I used to live there because they put it all in a brown bag, fish and chips, and they call it a chipper. We're going to the chipper, not the fish and chip shop, but they do like it. So anyway, here's the batter. This is, this is the dangerous bit because well, basically we're, we're at a point now where I've dipped my fish in the batter so it's totally and utterly covered in the batter, right? There it is dripping. I'm going to drop it into the oil um, and you want it to take to the oil uh, before you completely immerse it so that it will batter. So, famous last words. So I'm just gonna hold it in the batter as long as I can on the edge of the fish. So the bottom part of it starts to take and then I let it go. Now that's going to start. Then I get the other bit of fillet, which is over here. So I'm going to go for two here. Two bits of fillet, dip it in. That one's going lovely. Remember this is high temperature, 180 degrees. I'm dipping my fish in. I've washed my hands again. Don't worry. So that's a lovely batter coated fish. 
as you can see and again I'm going to drop it in the oil just let it take a bit and then gradually just lower it in so it just starts to batter the bottom bit and then let the other bit in that's going to go in for about six seven minutes I'm going to show you what's going on in there there's the fish six or seven minutes let that batter up still got my chips there look they're, they're not going to get twice cooked yet I'm not going to twice twice cook those for the moment put the lid down there so six or seven minutes for the fish I've got a timer on my non transgender it's not a transgender what am I talking about my non gender specific deep fat fryer but uh, yeah that we'll do the fish and then when the fish is cooked take it out put it onto some uh, kitchen roll so that it will drain a little bit it will stay hot and then you put your fish in you put your chips in to the same heat into the same oil just to give them three minutes and then by the time they come out your fish will be at a nice heat as well but we'll, we'll show you that in a minute yeah we'll show you that in a minute outtakes outtakes look at me i'm rio ferdinand i'm doing exercise at home i'm joe wicks whilst cooking fish and chips bang Hello, so we've taken the fish out and as you can see there, I've got two little bits of cod there. I've, I've probably gone a little bit too far on that, that's a little bit too brown for me. But, um, and also, we are in lockdown, so getting good quality fish is a little bit difficult at the moment. But two bits of fish there, they're red, they're, that's ready. So um, normally you'd want like a nice big bit of fish, but hard to get it on lockdown. So that's been done, we keep the same oil and what we're going to do is, have I got, have I got a, yeah this will be better. These are the half cooked chips and uh, we're going to put half of them in to cook for three minutes or so. And then, if you can get, if you can get it all in, in in one, great, but it will literally only going to take two minutes to do these chips for the second time, going into the hot 180 degrees that we've just had for the fish, so that'll work well. Also, peas, mushy peas here. You don't have to have these. What I've got is a handful of, uh, well, probably two handfuls of frozen peas in a pan with two lugs of olive oil, chopped mint if you want to add it, and uh, some chopped spring onion. And basically, just put it over a heat and let that cook together. And what I'm going to do then with that is when that's cooked after about 10 minutes, I'm just going to get a food blender and blend it down into the mushy peas. So I, I, I wasn't, I didn't really want to focus on the mushy peas on this because I didn't know whether people would like the mushy, mushy peas. But um, we will, uh, we will put the recipe in below. But it's very easy to do that. Get yourself a pan, two lugs of olive oil, frozen peas, chopped mint, and um, chopped mint, not mint. Don't put mint in it. Chopped mint you can add spring onions if you want and then just give it a stir on a heat medium heat and let it just cook with the lid on for about 10 minutes so it cooks the peas cooks the spring onion and the mint and the, the olive oil sort of gives it that nice sort of something to cook in and then when it's all cooked you just blend it down and that'll be your mushy peas i probably will revisit this because the chips are going to be nice i'm not overly happy with the fish because the fish wasn't as big as i wanted it to be and i've left the batter in a little bit too long what i would say is keep your eye on the batter you don't want it to go i don't like it sort of golden brown i want it just before that so the batter's quite i think my batter's going to be quite well no now it's getting a bit soggy it's not too bad i think we'll get away with it i think we'll get away with it i see i'm diminishing my achievements you see i always want perfection let's wait anyway let's wait on these chips let's have a chat these chips, literally, while I'm chatting to you, I've done it on purpose, should be banging to come out. They're not far off there. Give them a little bit more. Let's have a chat. Fish and chips, love them. Absolutely love fish and chips, yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of fish and chips. Um, yeah, it takes, you, takes me back to Friday nights down the pub with Grandad and then the other family were there, but that was the one I liked the best. And then... Uh, have fish and chip supper on the way back but uh, what's your favorite fish and chip order hmm I hear you say um, 
you know, different different fish and chips orders for different moods. Sometimes I like uh, always chips, always chips. But sometimes I like a pucker pie, beef and onion, or steak and kidney. No, not steak and kidney. Can't stand the kidney. Beef and onion pie with um, with chips, gravy, and mushy peas, or substitute it for a chicken and mushroom pie, or just the standard fish and chips and mushy peas. Not really a battered sausage sort of person. Nah, there's something about that battered sausage that makes well. I'm, you know, as we know. Anyway, these chips should now be done, and they are banging, they are. Look at the tone on them. Can you see it? Look at the tone on them chips. So, you can do them for as long as you want to, but it's about getting them to what you want. Remember, these are twice cooked chips, so they're gonna go in. Um, I've got another batch to do, but basically my fish is ready, my chips ready. I'm just gonna blend mushy peas. Let's show you the finished thing. And there you have it, the complete fish and chips. The mushy peas, as you can see, lovely and mushy with the mint and everything like that the chips done to my taste i mean look if you don't want yours chips as that brown take them out before they're that brown the fish as i said is probably a little bit over and ideally i would want uh, a bigger piece of fish with a little bit less golden batter but this is all about timing when you're doing it yourself you can have chips that are a little bit less brown than that if you don't like them like that and you can have your fish batter lighter than that if you don't want it with a bigger fish but uh, the technique is there and I'm going to eat it. Mmm. Good time. And there you have it. Fish and chips. Goldbridge style. Give it a go. Give them a taste. Those chips will be mine. A little bit of a secret at the end. The quality of your potato makes a diff big difference, as I said. And also, um, that's my tip. I've already given it to you. But uh, get in the comments, smash a like, subscribe if you're new, and let me know what other dishes you'd like me to do. I've got a few in mind. I'm real, as I said before, I'm gonna work through things I like, but I am open to ideas. Thanks everyone for watching. Speak to you soon.